Thank you everyone who's come. This should be a relatively quick presentation. We just want to give an overview and a little bit of background information on the solar hot water program for commercial properties that's going on in Massachusetts right now. Um, if you have any questions, you'll see there's a little place uh, as part of the webinar where you can write um, a question to me. I will look at them all at the end and read them out loud for the benefit of everyone, and then we'll answer them. Um, so if you have a question, just type it in there whenever it comes up. Um, as you can see, this is a program that's happening um, between the Center for Ecotechnology and the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. Uh, the Mass CEC has some good incentives and a lot of um, background to the program, and then CET is helping them to sort of get it uh, more, to get more information out to everybody. So, at the very beginning, what is solar hot water? Um, I know a lot of people are really familiar with solar electric. I think people are less familiar with the technology behind solar hot water. Um, Essentially, it is similar to solar electric in that you use sunlight to do something. In this case, it's to heat hot water. Um, unlike solar PV, it not only requires the collectors but also a storage tank to put the hot water, and it can provide up to 80% of domestic hot water needs. Um, this is a picture of Nancy, who is actually on the call, so if you heard me talk to her earlier, and Dave Smith from Smith's Country Cheese looking at some of the controls for their solar hot water system. And this is just a really simplified uh, picture of how solar hot water works. Um, essentially, you have a collector, the sun shines on it, it heats up. Um, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, it generally doesn't heat up the water directly. I think it heats up a mixture of water and or something else. Is that right, John? Glycol. Yeah, glycol. glycol. A propylene non-toxic glycol, so an antifreeze, basically. Right. Because it's... It's chilly in Massachusetts. <laughs> and then that runs into yeah. a storage tank, and there's like a pipe that runs around the tank. It doesn't directly go into the water, obviously, because you don't want the glycol in the water. Um, and that heats up the water. And this is obviously a very simplified drawing of it, but it kind of gives you the idea of how it works. And then the other question that comes up a lot is, what is commercial scale? So the program that we're focused on at CET and the program we're going to talk about today is the commercial scale version. There are solar hot water installations for um, smaller scale and for residential, but we're gonna talk about commercial scale, which is the larger one. So commercial scale essentially means that it has eight collectors or more. So if you think back to that picture, the collector is uh, essentially the solar panel that's on the roof or on the ground or wherever it is outside. Um, having eight or more, uh, translates to having a rel relatively large hot water need, so eight or more collectors is commercial scale. You can see that even though it's called commercial, that can include multifamily pro projects as well as public or nonprofit, which we wouldn't typically think of in the um, meaning commercial, but they uh, fall under the same scale. And I also have a note here. So. CEC's rebate program works so that anything more than a single family project can be commercial scale as long as it has eight or more collectors. Uh, slight correction, it's more than eight. So eight okay. collectors is actually not commercial scale. It has to be more than eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of exactly eight for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here, John. <laughs> I yeah, was sure. That. Well, the slide's correct. It's just you were stating it differently. Stating than the it slide. wrong. So, yeah. Totally fine. So eight is not commercial scale, more than eight. Got it. More than eight, right. And another question that comes up a lot is, is solar hot water right for me? So people want to know sort of what are the requirements beforehand to know if this is something that they want to pursue. Um, the two questions we start with are, do you have year-round hot water use? So do you have a need for hot water all the time, not just, say, in the summer or not just in the winter? And do you want to reduce the cost that, you're, that you have to currently heat your hot water? So it can apply to um, 
heating hot water in a variety of ways, oil, electricity, propane, um, natural gas, there's a lot of different options. And there are a couple more requirements that we'll get into a little bit later, but these are sort of the basic starting questions. Um, some other things that people should consider is how the hot water is currently heated. That'll let you know how much the potential savings can be. Um, and then especially important is if you have access to the sun, obviously, since you're doing a solar installation, you wanna make sure you have um, a good site for solar access, which is something that a solar contractor or a study will help you determine. Um, this picture is actually the apartment building that I live in. And it's really interesting because I think people think of solar hot water as those big flat plate collectors. They don't necessarily have to be. If you can see those big black awnings that look like tubes, sort of, that's actually the solar hot water collection. Um, and John, you guys did this install, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to add we about did, um, the uh, tubular nature? Well, well, not the tubular so much as the, the, the passive solar component of this because they those awnings act as uh, summer shades, which is nice to reduce air conditioning costs. But they're still getting winter sun. I think this was probably taken later in the year. You can see there's no leaves on the trees. So the mm -hmm. sun is coming in in the, in the winter, but blocked uh, a lot in the summer. So that was helpful. We did two projects for this developer. He did another school renovation, same, same idea, awning mount like this. So worked out well. Okay. Thank you. I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> sure. Didn't know you lived there. That's great. Yeah, I actually live um, lower, like in the, the basement sort of level, so you can't actually, I don't actually get the awnings over my windows is the point, but I still benefit from it. Um, so this is just a list of the sectors that are the most applicable for solar hot water. It doesn't mean that if you're not a part of one of these sectors, you can't have solar hot water. These are just the ones that we found have year-round significant solar hot water use. Um, you can see that multifamily buildings are on there. There are especially extra incentives for low-income multifamily buildings. So if you're a property manager of one of those, we definitely want to talk to you. And um, the other thing that's big is colleges and universities. We've had some pretty good interest there. They do, um, they do obviously have a lot of hot water usage. And if I have any of my farmers there, the dairy farms tend to be the one that has the most hot water usage for washing and for processing things. Um, if you remember the picture of Dave Smith, that dairy farm also has a cheese making operation and that uses a lot of hot water. So it was a really good install for them. Um, this is a picture that came from New England Solar Hot Water, but I'm not sure exactly where this is installed. You can see there's definitely a whole bunch of panels there. Yeah, that's well, an apartment building downtown Boston, low-income housing apartment building downtown Boston. Awesome. I think there's uh, 100 units in that building. So. Wow. And I think I counted 12 panels there. Yeah, there are a couple more rows behind. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a really large project. Yeah. There's PV on that roof too, small PV. Oh, one of the few, one of the few installations where the solar thermal array is larger than the PV array. You know, they just prioritize right. solar hot water for for good reason. Yeah. So, what would you need to start a solar hot water project? And the first thing is a solar installer. So I typically point people here first because the solar installers have a lot more technical knowledge than I do. You can tell that I've asked John a lot of questions already. Um, John on the call is from New England Solar Hot Water. We are also, um, I have made this presentation with help from Spartan Solar and RES. Um, Spartan wasn't able to join us today. I think RES might be listening at this point. And these are just some of the solar installers in Massachusetts. You don't have to work with one of them. Um, there are some requirements for solar installers, so I'll get to in just a second, but you are welcome to choose someone that works for your project. And so when you're looking for a solar installer, you wanna make sure, first of all, that they do work in your geographic area. So not all solar installers work across the state of Massachusetts. You wanna make sure you have one that's near where you are, and also that they install hot water systems. 
if you just look up solar installers, even if you look up solar, even if you put in like solar hot water into your search, it often comes up with installers that only do solar electric. So you want to make sure that you're working with someone who can do solar hot water and who knows um, how to do a project like that. Also, someone who has experience with your particular scale or size. Not all installers do commercial size installs. Some will only do smaller residential ones. Um, I'm not sure if there's anyone who only does commercial scale, but that might also be a thing. And then for the purposes of getting a Mass DEC rebate, they'll need to be on Power Clerk, which is just Mass DEC's system for tracking projects and installers and making sure that all the requirements are met. So it's particular to Mass DEC. Um, we have another nice picture here from New England Solar Hot Water of an install at Harvard University. Like I said, colleges and universities are um, one of the better sectors for this. Well, they're a good sector, not necessarily a better one. Yeah, as long as they're using their uh, facilities in the summertime. This happens to yeah. be a dorm that is used year-round. So. And then something else that's needed, um, sort of not necessarily Something else that's needed up front or before you really get a project underway is a certain amount of study and assessment. So the Mass DEC requires a feasibility study for anything that's commercial scale. Um, and this is something that the solar installers can help with or CET can help you with. And that basically just says whether the project is sort of good to go forward or not. Like, is there enough resource? Does the cost benefit ratio work out? Is it feasible to do this project? And you will also need, if you're going for a Mass DEC incentive, a Mass Save Energy Efficiency Audit, which are usually provided free of cost by Mass Save, and they have to be performed either within the past 48 months or you have to say you'll have one done within the next six, which I believe is just to make sure that there's, um, there's a good, efficient business hooked up to this. And this isn't really to do with a study, but your business or farm or whatever you are needs to be in a service territory that contributes to the Renewable Energy Trust. So most of the major utilities in Massachusetts do. I think it's only some municipal utilities that don't, but some of them do also. So if you're in um, a municipal or a smaller utility section, you would just want to check sort of upfront before you invest any money in it to make sure you're going to be eligible for the Mass DEC incentive. And then everyone's favorite question, how much funding is there? So everyone wants to know how much money they can get for their project. And there are a lot of different sources of funding and they're all somewhat complex. I'm just gonna go over a few examples. We're not gonna go into every single detail because every project is really unique and everyone can fit into a certain patchwork of funding. And it's really hard to make general statements about what will be best for anyone. That's why um, the that's why CET is helping Mass DEC. We want to help people be able to navigate this complex web of funding and requirements without having to learn all the ins and outs of it. So first of all, as I mentioned, you have to have a feasibility study. The Mass DEC does have feasibility study incentives. Um, only project sites with government, nonprofit, agricultural, or affordable housing are eligible for the Mass DEC's feasibility study rebates. If you are one of those, you can be eligible for up to $5,000 in a rebate with a minimum cost share of 5%. And natural gas customers will qualify for this. They had previously sort of been not totally disqualified, but sort of at the bottom. But um, CEC is saying they can qualify if they can demonstrate a willingness to accept longer payback times. That's just because natural gas is one of the more efficient ways to heat hot water. So switching from that to something else gains you less of a um, less of an efficiency than if you're switching from a less efficient fuel like oil or propane. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and then uh, utilities may also help fund a feasibility study. Uh, CAT has especially been talking to Berkshire Gas and Columbia Gas about their willingness to fund these. This will be done on a case-by-case -case basis, but if you do heat your hot water with Berkshire Gas or Columbia Gas, that's something that we can talk to the utility about. Um, getting them involved in funding not only the feasibility study, but also the project. So these are the other typical types of, of money for projects like this. They fall into the categories of rebates, grants, and tax credits. 
Um, this is a nice roof mounted system from New England Solar Hot Water, which I believe is on a veterans hospital. So here's an example of a rebate. This is the Mass PEC's rebate. This is a very simplified version of how the rebates are calculated. They are run through a sort of complex uh, calculation and equation, which you really won't have to worry about. Either CET or your solar installer will help you to figure that out. You don't have to like know the equation. Um, but the gist of it is that the maximum rebate for a regular commercial scale project is 30% of the project cost up to $100,000. And then you can see the percentage goes up for different sectors. So if you're a nonprofit or a public entity, it's 50%. If it's a multifamily property with affordable housing, it goes up to 75%. So that's probably the best one. Um, the maximum total rebate, it says, is 101.5. There are some things that can be added on to the Mass TEC's rebate. Um, as John mentioned, sometimes people do solar thermal and solar electric. Um, if you do that, there is some additional money that can be added. Um, Mass CEC's rebates operate on a rolling deadline, so there's not like a particular date when things are due. And there is a caveat that you can't begin construction until you receive word of funding. So you need to go through the feasibility study process and submit to the Mass CEC, and then they'll tell you if it's funded before you can actually start the project. So you want to get all that lined up beforehand. And again, this is something that CET and the contractor will help you to figure out what you're eligible for and what's the best course of action. Uh, this is an example of a grant. So there are two or three main grants that can fund um, solar thermal. One of the ones that's only applicable for farms is the MDAR Agricultural Energy Grant, which is something that I know a lot about. So if you are a farm and you want to do solar thermal, just come and talk to me. Um, the one that I put up here is REAP. REAP is the Rural Energy for America program. It's a federal grant that provides funding for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects that are either being put onto farms or agricultural producers or rural small businesses. So you have to be under a certain amount of income for your business and in a rural area, which are things I can help you to figure out. Um, the CET also runs the Mass Farm Energy Program, so I have a lot of experience working with REAP, and it's something that I'm going to kind of look at everyone for. Um, you can request a grant between $2,500 and $500,000, and since that's 25% of the project cost, it means your project cost is between $10,000 and $2 million. So you can get really up there um, in terms of project costs. I don't think solar thermal quite costs $2 million, <laughs> but if it did, we might be able to help. Um, I said, you must be an ag producer or a rural small business. This is a really nice picture of a solar thermal installation at Cricket Creek Farm. That install was done by Spartan Solar. Um, they are another dairy farm that also has a cheese making operation, so they had a pretty high hot water usage. And this is an example of one of the tax credits. So this is the federal tax credit, or the FTC. Um, you can see that one of the eligible technologies is solar water heating. And what this is saying is that you are eligible for a 30% rebate of the total project cost, including solar design, labor, and components. And so how much of a tax credit you're eligible for um, is based on when the system is installed. And you can see that it's decreasing as time goes on. So there's definitely an increased incentive to get a solar thermal project going sooner rather than later. And the other thing I should mention is in order to be eligible for the tax credit, you have to have ta tax liability, which means you can't be a nonprofit or a public entity because they don't have the tax liability. Um, but those entities are eligible for a higher mass EC rebate, so it all sort of balances out. And then please don't get bogged down in this little um, Thing I put at the bottom here, I just wanted to show an example of an AEC calculation and how uh, solar contractors would be able to help you figure that out. So this is something that's relatively new, the alternative energy credit. Um, they function similarly to SREX in that they are market driven. And as you can see, it just started in December of 2017, which is just a couple of months ago, so not too long. And one AEC is equal to one 
megawatt hour of electricity, or that was supposed to be 3,412,000 BTUs. I don't know where the BTU went. Sorry about that. And it's something that uh, CEC and solar contractors will sort of have a handle on. This little box down the bottom I pulled from Spartan Solar site. They've made some assumptions about um, a theoretical solar panel, a theoretical solar hot water install, and then you can see that they did this calculation that sort of came out to the end to what I assume they told the customer you would be able to earn $1,972 from your AEC program. So um, there are three different categories for solar thermal generators, small, intermediate, and large. Whichever one you're in determines the guidelines for what your metering has to be, what you have to do to calculate thermal output, um, what information has to be submitted, and then the multipliers, which you can see Spartan use down there. And then there's also pre-minting and forward minting of AECs. Pre-minting just means that it allows certain generators to receive 10 years of AECs up front in the first quarter of operation. And forward minting allows generators to receive a predetermined number of AECs each quarter over a period of 10 years. Both of these allow generators to receive AECs without directly metering their thermal output. Um, and I'm going to send these slides around, and I have a bunch more notes about AECs that gets into some more detail if you guys are uh, curious about them, or you can email or call me with questions. Um, but essentially, it's just that renewable energy systems earn certificates based on their energy production. It's very, very similar to SREX. You then can sell those certificates to buyers. Um, you will probably have to have some sort of aggregator or broker to help you with selling the AECs, but there are already systems set up for that. Um, Nancy or John, do you want to weigh in on anything here? Um, no, except I think the calculation is good. We've, we've already submitted about 50 projects, residential projects, so that calculation you're showing there is pretty pretty accurate, maybe a little conservative, if anything. Uh, awesome. So that's a really nice program. The big difference with SREX is you can you can get the, the payment in one payment up front, even for systems as large as 20 panels. So that's their their definition of small system is different from Mass CEC. It's 20 panels mm -hmm. or less. So that's uh, it's actually square footage, 660 square feet, I think. So uh, a lot of projects qualify for that one upfront payment, which is really nice. Yeah, I did just borrow that box right from Spartan Solar's website, and I was like, well, that's confusing. <laughs> but it does sort of give you an idea of um, a guesstimate of cost. This is something else I borrowed from Spartan. This was actually for Cricket Creek Farm. So this is just an example of, if you look at the bottom there, how much the solar thermal system cost. It cost $60,000. So that was the cost they were working with. They were able to get an MDAR grant, which as I mentioned is for farms and ag producers. They got the Mass CEC solar hot water rebate. They took the 30% federal tax credit and then they used their AECs. And so the farm only ended up really paying $3,930 for the system. So this is just an example of how the cost could shake out. I assume this is, um, somewhat simplified. There was probably a lot behind this, but this was a really nice table that they had that I thought would be good to show just how it could work. And as I've said many times, CEC will help you navigate this. So our role in this whole program is to sort of connect the businesses and farms and consumers with solar contractors, with the mass CEC, and for us to know all the ins and outs and complicated things so that you don't have to. So if you have questions or you want to get one of these going, we will help you get through the process. Um, we can help you find an installer. I have a list. We can help you navigate through that complex funding. We have a pretty good handle on it, um, guide them through the process, and just help you know which step is next. Um, this is another picture. I don't know if you guys can quite read it. It does say Smith's Country Cheese above the door. This is the solar thermal array that we saw the uh, mechanics of before. And that's all I have for the presentation. Um, I put the contact info up here for myself. I'm Megan. For John from New England Solar Hot Water, who you've heard. 
Um, RES is another contractor that helped me with this presentation, and Spartan, who wasn't able to join us today. I do see I have at least one question. I'm going to take a look at that now. If you have any other questions, feel free to send them over. Yes, so the question is, will you send the PowerPoint to the group? I absolutely will do that. Um, I have a list of all your email addresses from when you registered. I will send you a copy of this PowerPoint. Uh, it has a couple good links in here. It has all of my notes to go with the slides. As you can see, it's got links and email addresses for all the solar people, so I'll absolutely send this out um, just a little bit later today. And I did also record this, so there will be a recording of this available. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to host it yet, but I will let you guys know when it's available in case uh, you want to share it with anybody or you want to see any part of it again. Well, that's the only question I have right now. Anybody have any other questions? I know that was a lot of information. Nancy, John, you want to add anything? I wouldn't know where to begin, but <laughs> <laughs> please contact us. We're happy to talk with specific questions. Yep. I, I guess I would. I guess I would only just add that um, <laughs> that we have found that. Often, um, you know, there's been a lot of attention, as you said earlier, on uh, solar electricity, and um, it's just phenomenal the um, the benefits and also opportunities to install solar hot water if you've got the the right application and and site. And so, um, and there really has never been a better time, and I don't know that there ever will be a better time than now. So, that's just kind of my little pitch <laughs> so and uh, and Megan is very very helpful in helping walk through the steps so um, definitely uh, contact Megan with any questions yeah absolutely contact me if I don't know the answer I'll find out um, and that number that's up there and that email address come right to me there's nobody else it's not like a phone bank full of people it's just me so you'll know who you're getting a hold of Well, I'm not getting any more questions, and that went a lot faster than I thought it was going to, but I'm sure no one is upset about a shorter webinar than usual. Um, if you guys have any other questions or anything comes up, please feel free to email or give me a call, and I will send the slides out to everyone. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well done. All right. Thank you guys so much, especially um, John and Nancy. Thank you for all your input and for being there. <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you. All right. Everyone have a good day.